Hi, good morning. You're watching News at 10 on Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Ash Parya Kapoor with you. Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Myanmar is our top focus. At the top of this hour, we look closely at Prime Minister's meeting with the Siu Chin, of course, coming in the backdrop of the Rohingya crisis. All the details to follow. Let us start the bulletin with the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi holds talks with Myanmar State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi, calls her a valued friend to several agreements expected to be signed. India issues demarch to Pakistan over 26th of August attack in Pulwama, asks it to bring to justice those responsible for the attack that claimed the life of eight security men. Journalist Gauri Lankesh shot dead outside her home in Bengaluru by unknown assailants. Chief Minister terms killing as a shocking. Union Minister Rajivardhan Singh Rathore terms it a heinous crime. US President scraps Obama-era amnesty program for young immigrants. Move likely to impact more than 7,000 Indian Americans. An extremely dangerous hurricane, Irma strengthens into a Category 5 storm, moves towards the Caribbean and southern United States. The top story at the top of this hour, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is meeting Myanmar's State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi during his first three-day bilateral visit to Myanmar. Now, both the leaders are holding talks on wide-ranging issues. Modi and Suu Kyi are expected to sign agreements after these talks. Now, Suu Kyi is also hosting a lunch for the Prime Minister today. Now, MEA spokesperson Ravish Kumar tweeted, Meeting a valued friend, Prime Minister Narendra Modi with the state con councillor Aung San Suu Kyi. Now, the Prime Minister's visit to Myanmar comes amid a spike in ethnic violence with the Rohingya Muslims in the Rakhine state. He is expected to raise the issue of the exodus of the ethnic Rohingyas into the neighbouring countries, including ours. On Tuesday, Prime Minister Modi met uh, Myanmar President Hatin Kyo, where both the leaders discussed steps to deepen India and Myanmar's historical relationship. Prime Minister Modi also gifted him a sculpture of uh, the Bodhi tree and a reproduction of uh, 1841 map of a stretch of the river Salween. Now, after concluding his engagements in Nepito, Prime Minister Modi will travel uh, to Bagan, where India is involved in a development cooperation project. According to reports, the issue most likely to dominate Prime Minister's trip to Myanmar will be the deportation of uh, thousands of Rohingya Muslim refugees from India. And earlier, ahead of Prime Minister's uh, Myanmar visit in China, India and China decided to shun differences and move forward on the path of cooperation. Now, meeting on the sidelines of the BRIC summit in China's uh, Xiamen city, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping also agreed to play to each other's strengths to encourage cooperation. Both the leaders also decided to let the Doklam issue be dealt by border mechanisms and let business and trade flourish instead of conflict and confrontation. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping held their first bilateral talks after the Doklam border standoff on Tuesday. The hour-long meeting included discussions on economic, security and strategic issues. Injecting a positive note to the meeting, Prime Minister Modi congratulated the Chinese President for the successful conclusion of BRICS. आपकी पूरी टीम को हृदय से बहुत बहुत बधाई देना चाहता हूं मैं समझता हूं कि तेज गति से बदलते वैश्विक परिवेश पर परिवेश में ब्रिक्स को और अधिक प्रासंगिक से प्रासंगिक बनाने में यह शिखर सम्मेलन सचमुच में बहुत सफल हुआ है द लास्ट बायलैटरल मीटिंग बिटवीन द टू लीडर्स वाज इन जून इन अस्थाना 
where they decided not to turn differences in disputes. The Chinese president also appreciated Modi's efforts for peace between the two Asian giants. He clearly said China was ready to work with India on the basis of Panchshil agreement. <laughs> Both leaders agreed on the need for engagement at all levels, especially on security issues. They also recognized that the border issues were an important aspect of their differences and should not be allowed to flare up in the manner it did over Doklam. Both of us know what happened. Okay. So this was not a backwards-looking conversation. This was a forward-looking conversation. The sense of it was, how do we take the relationship forward? How do we ensure that there is peace and tranquility on the border areas to ensure that the relationship stays forward? How do we ensure that mutual uh, contacts and mutual trust is strengthened so that peace and tranquility on the border areas? So that was the direction in which the conversation was. China also gave an indication of its changed stance at the BRICS summit when it agreed on the Xiamen declaration that criticized terrorist groups being sheltered in Pakistan. The bilateral meeting was also a strong affirmation of the recognition at the leadership level to keep the relationship on an upward trajectory. Chinese foreign minister contends that India should appreciate China's development in a positive manner. But Indian officials say that China also must understand the importance of India in the world and China should not encroach into the strategic space of India. If both countries appreciate each other's concerns, it will be a win-win situation. Akhilesh Suman for Raj Sabha Television with camera person Om Prakash in Delhi. And after pitching strongly for peace at the Xiamen BRICS meeting, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday followed up by suggesting 10 noble commitments to BRICS leaders to achieve global transformation. Prime Minister Modi was speaking at the BRICS Emerging Markets and Developing Countries Dialogue in the Xiamen city of China. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday pitched for coordinated action on counter-terrorism, cyber security and disaster management. Speaking at the BRICS Emerging Markets and Developing Countries Dialogue in Xiamen, Modi suggested 10 commitments for global transformation. I had spoken about the BRICS running the global transformation in the next 10 years for it to be a golden decade. I suggest that this can be brought about with our proactive approach, policies and actions on the following 10 noble commitments. The Prime Minister also said the development agenda of BRICS countries lies with Sapka Saat, Sapka Vikas. He urged the BRICS nations to work collectively for a digital world, skilled world and healthier world. The countries present here together represent almost half of the humanity. Whatever we do will impact the world sustainably. So it is our solemn duty to make a better world brick by brick through bricks. Besides Modi, leaders of Brazil, Russia, China, South Africa and five guest countries, Egypt, Tajikistan, Thailand, Mexico and Kenya attended the dialogue. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Now, amid mounting international pressure to act against terror groups, Pakistan has rejected a declaration by the BRICS nations that includes China, saying that there was no safe havens for terrorists on its soil. Leaders from Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa condemned terrorism in all its forms and its manifestations on Monday, also expressing concern over the threat posed by the terror groups, including those based in Pakistan. The 43-page declaration expressed concern over the security situation in the region and violence caused by the Taliban, the Islamic State, Al-Qaeda and its affiliates as well. On to some other news now, External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj is in the Russian port city of Vladivostok on a three-day visit. She took part in the opening ceremony of the Third Eastern Economic Forum, which is deliberating pressing issues relating to global trade. 
Sushma Suraj will also hold a bilateral talks with her Russian counterpart Sergey Lavrov during which various issues relating to trade, investment and defence cooperation are likely to figure. The Eastern Economic Forum is considered as the biggest international communication platform for cooperation between businesses, leaders and senior government representatives from Russia, the Pacific region and the Association of the Southeast Asian Nations. Delegates from at least 24 countries including the US, Japan, China, Australia, Canada, Britain and Germany are attending the gathering. Swaraj's trip to the Russia follows the visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi as a guest of honour at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum in June. In three years, in a little time, not only in the Sudurpur Kshetra of Arthik Taakat, but also in Asia, Prashant Kshetra, and in the other parts of the world, the people and the workers are the most important part of the world. This part of the world is the most important part of the world. It is the most important part of the world that in the Sudurpur Kshetra of Arthik Taakat, निवेश के तथा व्यवसाय के बहुत अवसर बढ़े हैं। In order to make the news, India and Japan have resolved to further strengthen the military cooperation. The two countries held wide-ranging talks on bilateral defence and security ties. A range of bilateral and regional issues relating to security and defence were discussed during the talks between Defence Minister Arun Jaitley and his Japanese counterpart. Jaitley also called on Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and discussed ways uh, to deepening defence and security cooperation. The annual Indo-Japan Ministerial Defence Dialogue took place at a time when tension is mounting in the region due to North Korea's nuclear pursuits as well as China's growing assertiveness in the South China Sea. I think uh, both with regard to ter terrorism and also proliferation of uh, nuclear technologies and missiles in this region, is a matter of uh, mutual concern to both Japan and India. On to the other top story of the day, India has summoned the acting High Commissioner of Pakistan and has issued a demarche over the infiltration by a group of JEM terrorists. Now, these terrorists eight, uh, killed eight security personnel in Jammu and Kashmir's Pulwama last month. The Ministry of External Affairs has lodged a strong protest with the acting High Commissioner Heather Shah over the attack on uh, 26th of August. Now, in a statement, the MEA said that Pakistan was asked to investigate the incident and bring to justice the individuals and entities who are responsible for orchestrating it. The MEA said that it was conveyed to the envoy that the DNA samples of the neutralized terrorists have been preserved and can be made available for investigation in Pakistan. India has also asked Pakistan to abide by its commitment to not allow its territory to be used for terrorism. And in uh, news at 10, we'll take a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay with us. Gyan Chopper is the ancient version of Indian snakes and ladders. This intriguing game was popular among the old, the young and the rulers as well. The chopper has its origin in the Jain philosophy. It tells the story of virtue, symbolized by the ladders, rewarded, while the vices shown by the snakes are punished. Each square, in turn, also narrates a message of wisdom. Welcome back after the break. Now, President Ramnath Kovind has asked teachers not to commercialize education. He said there would be no difference between them and traders if they indulge in such activities. Addressing the recipients of the National Awards for Teachers at the Darbar Hall of the Rajtrupati Bhavan, the President said that the teachers' fraternity must impart education not to make their students doctors or engineers, but to groom them to become a good human being first. 
He also underlined that education was never sold or commercialized in the Indian tradition and was considered as Vidya Dan. ये शिक्षक मूल रूप से जो उनका दायित्व मिला है किसी के किसी बच्चे का जीवन संवारने का वो बहुत बड़ा दायित्व माँ बाप से भी बढ़ करके दायित्व और इसीलिए कभी कभी मैं कहता हूँ यू ले द फाउंडेशन ऑफ ए चाइल्ड ए फाउंडेशन नीहू का पत्थर वो एक बच्चा हो सकता है लेकिन नीहू का पत्थर रखना है किस तरीके से रखना है वो यदि सोचता है कि इस बच्चे का भविष्य का यहाँ से आज से लेकर के और लगभग इस राष्ट्र को समर्पित करने की जो भावना है उस बच्चे में वो आगामी इस देश में 80-90 साल तक यदि वो सेवा कर सकता है राष्ट्र को समर्पण के साथ में वो जो नीव का पत्थर एक बच्चा हो सकता है लेकिन उस पत्थर को रखने का काम जो है वो शिक्षक का है एंड वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एम वेंकैया नायडू ऑन ट्यूसडे अंडरस्कोर द नीड टू अचीव 100 परसेंट लिटरेसी इन द नेक्स्ट फाइव इयर्स नो ऑनरिंग टीचर्स ऑन द टीचर्स डे ही सेड बोथ द सेंट्रल एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स मस्ट पे स्पेशल अटेंशन टू पॉपुलराइज द स्टडी ऑफ वंस मदर टंग ही आल्सो इनॉग्रेटेड द दीक्षा पोर्टल फॉर टीचर्स सम्मानित शिक्षक बंधुओं On the occasion of Teachers Day, Vice President Venkaiya Naidu presented the National Award to Teachers 2016 at Vigyan Bhavan. Shrimati Nalle Boyna Vimla Kumari. Underscoring the crucial role that teachers play in building the country's future, the Vice President said over the next few years, government, leaders and society have to make a collective effort to achieve 100% literacy. I hope that the government will take all the steps that no children will be allowed to stay out of school. That should be the mission of the government. That should be the duty of all the people. It is not the duty of teacher alone. It is the duty of all enlightened citizens, the parents, the public representatives, MLAs, MPs, ministers. Everybody should get involved into this and see to it that we achieve 100 percent literacy rate. Right? Vice President Naidu also emphasized the need to learn local and regional languages in the early stages of education. A portal named Deeksha was inaugurated on the occasion to enable teachers to access courses via YouTube. और उनका साथ देंगे हम सब मिलकर. Deeksha National Digital Infrastructure for Teachers. Union HRD Minister Prakash Javadekar appealed to teachers to provide good education to all. कि जो 10 लाख सरकारी स्कूल्स हैं, आज लोग मानते हैं कि प्राइवेट निजी स्कूल अच्छे हैं। हम कहते हैं कि निजी स्कूल अच्छे होंगे तो सरकारी स्कूल भी अच्छे होंगे दोनों में प्रतिस्पर्धा होगी सबको शिक्षा अच्छी शिक्षा इसी तरफ हमें जाना है और इसलिए एजुकेट टू एम्पावर मेनी टीचर्स गिव सजेशन टू इम्प्रूव द क्वालिटी ऑफ एजुकेशन हम बच्चों को विद्यालय तक लाएं और उसके लिए सबसे जरूरी है कि हम बच्चों को इतना मोटिवेशनल तरीके से पढ़ाएं इतने इनोवेटिव तरीके से पढ़ाएं कि बच्चे कॉन्वेंट स्कूल को छोड़ करके यहाँ आना स्वीकार करें शिक्षक का दायित्व बढ़ गया है एक गुरु जिसको कि ब्रह्मा विष्णु महेश और सत्य की धरती के लिए कहा जाता है आज उस गुरु को अपनी गरिमा बनाने की जरूरत है The National Award aims to give public recognition to meritorious teachers working in primary, middle and secondary schools. The awards were instituted in 1958. Out of the 374 awards, 20 are reserved for Sanskrit, Persian and Arabic teachers. Panchanan Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And uh, several dignitaries are uh, called on Vice President M. Venkaiya Naidu on uh, Tuesday. The Supreme Court Judge Justice uh, R. Bhanumati, the Chief Justice of uh, Bombay High Court, uh, Justice Manjula Chellur, and uh, the Attorney General of India, Shri K. K. Venu Gopal, called on the Vice President M. Venkaiya Naidu at his residence. The Minister of State for Shipping and Finance, Sir P. Radhakrishnan, also met the Vice President. Also, the Union Minister for Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, Sri Radha Mohan Singh, was also among those who called on the Vice President yesterday. 
Big developing story now. Senior Kannad journalist and activist Gauri Lankesh was uh, shot dead by unidentified assailants outside her residence in Bengaluru on Tuesday night. 55-year-old Gauri Lankesh was uh, opening the gate of her house in uh, Raja Rajeshwari Nagar when a motorcycle-born assailants uh, fired at her indiscriminately. She died on the spot as uh, two bullets hit her in the chest and one on her forehead. Police suspect that she was under surveillance of the assailants who must have trailed her closely. The slain journalist edited the Kannar tabloid Gauri Lankesh Patrike besides owning some other publications. Three police teams have now been constituted to probe the killing. The Chief Minister Siddhara Maya has also termed her death as a shocking. Union Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting Rajavardhan Singh Rathore denounced the incident saying that he condemns all acts of violence against journalists. Condemning the killing, the BJP National General Secretary P. Murlidhar Rao has said that onus is on Siddhara Maya to ensure proper investigation into the case. Congress Vice President uh, Rahul Gandhi said that truth cannot be silenced and demanded that the culprits be tracked down and punished. There we have already formed three special teams. One team headed by the Joint Commissioner of uh, Crime Branch, Satish Kumar. Another team headed by the ACP Kengeri Gate. Another team headed by ACP Chikpet. Now she is alone at home. Nobody else is there. Regarding the CC footage, the cameras are there. The CC footages are recorded, will be recorded inside. That being a scene of crime with the forensic experts only, we will be attending to this investigation matter. On to some other news now. Over 2 lakh firms have been struck off from the registrar of companies for failing to comply with regulatory requirements. This comes as the government continues its crackdown on shell companies which are allegedly used as conduits for illicit fund flows and tax evasion. The government also initiated authorities concerned to restrict the operations of their bank accounts. Now, according to reports, uh, the names of more than 2 lakh companies have been struck off from the registrar of companies. There's existing directors and authorized signatories of the such uh, struck off companies will now become ex-directors or ex-authorized signatories. The Department of Financial Services has advised banks that they should now take immediate steps to put restrictions on the bank accounts of uh, such struck off companies. Our top international focus now, U.S. President Donald Trump has announced termination of a program that protected undocumented immigrants called Dreamers who were brought to the United States as children. Trump justified the policy shift by describing a constitutional misstep on the part of the Obama administration. The onus is now on Congress to address the situation of 8 lakh Dreamers and all 11 million undocumented immigrants in the U.S. legislatively before they are exposed to the threat of deportation. The Trump administration has announced the end of DACA or Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. The program that had protected nearly 8 lakh young undocumented immigrants brought to the United States as children from deportation. President Donald Trump blamed former President Barack Obama for creating the program through executive authority and urged Congress to come up with a solution. While existing recipients of DACA will see no impact for at least six months, no new applications can now be made. People think in terms of children, but they're really young adults. Uh, I have a love for these people, and hopefully now Congress will be able to help them and do it properly. In the five years since DACA was enacted, the nearly 8 lakh individuals who have received the protections, called DREAMers, have started families, pursued careers and studied in schools and universities across the U.S. The Trump administration pitched his action as the least disruptive option available after DACA was challenged in several courts. However, Obama criticized it, calling it cruel. Today's September 5th deadline was set by the plaintiffs presenting the administration with two and only two real options to choose from. The likely sudden cancellation of the program by a judge or an orderly wind down that preserves the rule of law and returns the question to the legislative branch where it belongs. The president chose the latter of the two options.
House Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi also slammed the decision and called on majority Republicans in Congress to join Democrats in moving to safeguard DACA recipients. Two senators from the opposing parties also called for bipartisan legislation to protect dreamers. The Mexican government said it regretted the scrapping of DACA and would step up its consular work on behalf of its citizens who are affected. For those young men and women across America, I can tell you this is a moment of great concern, great fear and great uh, anxiety about what's going to happen to their lives. Mm. Meanwhile, protests were held in several U.S. cities after the announcement, with police in New York making at least a dozen arrests when protesters rallied in front of Trump Tower. I just feel really um, uh, powerless because I feel as American as anybody else, right? And uh, for him to say that I, I came here to steal jobs uh, and, and, and remove the opportunities for American citizens, I feel betrayed. Trump took a hard line on immigration while campaigning last year and promised to scrap DACA if elected. And the decision, while throwing future of DACA recipients to House and Senate, also raises the specter of a protracted showdown over immigration, an issue that has haunted Washington for decades. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. More news from the United States, so where extremely dangerous hurricane Irma has strengthened into a Category 5 storm as it moved uh, towards uh, the Caribbean and the southern United States. The Dominican Republic, Antigua, Florida, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands as well as the other northern Caribbean states are on alert. Irma has uh, packing winds of 185 miles per hour. Hundreds of in all the states to provide shelters to the victims if needed. De la naturaleza. Con la naturaleza no hay control. Hay un constante monitoreo y depende prácticamente en un 90% de la población el hecho de que cuando se emiten los lineamientos de protección civil que van en procura de salvar de salvar vida. Na pase e zone que libre al impacte pifoyo, c'est trois departements qui dans l'eau. Nord, nord-ouest avec nord-est, avec certainement Haute Tibonite et Plateau Central. Mais parallèlement à ça, ça va pas limiter la ça, c'est que nous connaissons que nous avons quand même une certaine vulnérabilité. And news from the world of cricket, India will take on Sri Lanka in the lone T20 international in Colombo today. India remains unbeaten throughout the tour as it whitewashed the Lankans in the three-match test series as well as the five-match ODI series. However, India have uh, not been quite mighty in the T20s this year as they have been in tests and ODIs, having lost two of their last four matches. For Sri Lanka, T20s are the only format in which they have a positive win-lose ratio. They have beaten Australia and South Africa 2-1 before drawing the Bangladesh series 1-all this year. The match will begin at 7 p.m. And news from the Fleshing Meadows, where is the tennis player Pablo Boesta and uh, Sloane Stephens have reached the semi-finals of the ongoing U.S. Open tennis championship in New York. The 12th seeded uh, Carino Busta beat uh, Argentine Diego Schwarzman 6-4, 6-4, 6-2. While in the women's quarterfinals, the unseeded U.S. player Sloane Stephens edged past uh, 16 seeded Latvian Anastasia Sevastova 6-3, 3-6, 7-6. Meanwhile, in another match, American Venus Williams beat uh, Petra Kvitova 6-3, 3-6, 7-6. Williams will now face the Sloane Stephens in the semi-finals. That's all in this edition of News, but news and updates continue on Rajasabha Television. Thanks so much for watching.